Hi everyone and welcome! In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this scary looking crooked hat if you feel like dressing up as a witch for Halloween. I made mine out of the fabric leftovers from this green velvet dress. So while I do my best to power up this broom, and let me tell you it is not as easy as it looks in the movies, I urge you to take out your pens, papers and rulers. We are going to start with the pattern. Here is a quick look at what the finished pattern will look like. We will have a piece that looks like a big pancake with a hole in the middle to accommodate our head. And this triangle with a round base which will turn into a cone to create the top of the hat. So let's start with this first piece. We need to measure the circumference of this hole, which actually needs to be your head's size. Therefore, you need to measure the circumference of your head with a soft measuring tape or a piece of string that you'll measure afterwards. Now, to the number you just found, I highly recommend you add about 1.5 cm for your hat not to be too tight. To trace the circle, we need to determine the radius value. Just like the spoke of the bike's wheel, it is a measurement that goes from the center of the circle to the circle itself. With this measurement, you can then trace your circle using a compass or a ruler. I am afraid we will not escape a short but easy course on how to calculate this radius. The formula is as follow. The radius equals the perimeter of the circle divided by 2 times pi. Nobody panic, it is really easy. The perimeter here is the size of our head. Pi is, as always, about 3.14. Therefore, we have our head circumference, 54 for me, divided by 2 times 3.14, that is 6.28. Just put these two numbers in your calculator, shake it, and you'll get your radius measurement. In my case, 8.6 centimeters. Et voilà! Congratulations! I know every one of you survived. So we are going to fold a big piece of paper pattern in four. Now, starting from this folded corner, we are going to measure and mark our radius measurement. For me, 8.6. Now you can use a compass to trace your quarter of a circle, or just like me, you can gradually pivot your ruler instead. So from the corner up to here, we have the radius measurement. Now from this point on, we need to determine how wide we want the brim of her hat to be. Mine will be pretty dramatic, so I am going for the dreaded 13 number. So in my example, we have 8.6 cm here and we have 13 cm there. If I add both numbers together, I get 21.6 cm. Therefore, I place a mark at 21.6 cm and I trace another quarter of a circle thanks to this measurement, the same way we just did before. Alright, our first pattern piece is ready. I indicate that it is a hat for a scary witch whose head size is 54 cm and that she should have to cut this piece three times. Once for the top of the brim, once for the bottom and once for the lining to make it stiffer. Also note that I did not add any allowance, this will be added later on. On the inside of the piece and on the outside of the piece. So good job everyone, let's move on to the second piece of the pattern and this time we need to fold the paper twice only. At one end of the paper I make a mark, it is the tip of my pointed hat. I make a second mark on the other end of the paper, 
The length between these two marks is the desired height of the hat. Just like before, we are going to pivot our ruler so as to obtain the start of a circle. I am quickly going to retrace it by hand with a sharpie for you to see better. So there it is. So again, here we have the height of our hat and here we need to measure and mark half of our head circumference. Why not the full circumference, you might ask? Because we already folded our pattern paper in half. My head size is 54. Divided by 2, I have 27. So I place my tape at 27 and from there I am going to measure my curve. When I reach 0, I place a little mark. Then, with my Japanese ruler, I will connect it to the tip of the hat. Voila, the pattern is ready. We need to cut each piece three times, twice in the main fabric and once in a fusible or a firm interfacing. And we shall start with the brim. Here is the sew-on interfacing I am working with. I double it since it is not firm enough to my liking. Then I can trace my piece. Once again, feel free to use an iron-in fusible if you wish, I'd rather use up what I have on hand. To have both layers stick together, I will quickly pin them, cut the shape out and make a zigzag stitch all around with the sewing machine. I need to stitch on the outside of the piece as well as the inside edge. Now the next step is not compulsory but quite funny, we are going to add some wire all around the interfacing which will allow us to give the brim of the hat the desired shape later on. I wish to give it a very crooked and tired look, it's a witch hat. So this fine wire, which I double as well, will do the trick nicely. We cut the excess with the appropriate tool, of course not our sewing scissors, alright? And then we can quickly sew the wire with a thread and a needle. That may take a little bit of time and what I like to do when I have such a task, you know, something easy and repetitive that let our minds drift and relax. So what I love to do is just meditating or calling a friend, listening to an audiobook or a podcast. I'm actually now listening to a podcast my cousin is making. It's about sewing and crafting and embroidery and all of this. C'est la troisième saison. Bienvenue à vous. Bonjour, bienvenue. Aujourd'hui, je reçois Jessica Brizac et Michel Tenno pour leur livre Docteur Couture. Bonjour les filles. Bonjour. Alors, j'ai déjà reçu Jessica à mon épisode précédent. Here is the fabric I chose for my witch hat. It is a gorgeous velvet and as I said in the introduction, it's what I had left from making myself the green dress you saw at the beginning of the video. Now place the fabric right side down, place the interfacing on top of it and pin them together. We need to sew both layers together with a straight stitch at the sewing machine at about 1mm from the inner edge and 1mm from the outer edge as well. To be able to stitch as close as possible to the wire, I will take out the normal foot of my machine and place a narrow one instead. This presser foot is also used to insert invisible zippers. Make sure to really tighten the main fabric to have it lay flat and nice under the interfacing. When both layers are stitched, I will place them on top of another velvet fabric scrap, right sides together. I will pin everything in place and make another row of straight stitches, but this time around the piece and not on the interfacing. This narrow presser foot that you should find with your machine accessories is once again quite useful. 
We are going to cut the excess fabric with great care at about 2 to 3 millimeters from the seam, as well as the inside hole at about 1 or 2 centimeters from the interfacing. And then we turn our brim inside out. I welcome this decision to have used a thin and flexible wire. It will make this process so much easier. So let's do it! Now, using as a guide the seam we made before on the bottom side of the brim, we are going to stitch together the top and the bottom with the machine. Having both layers attached together around the inside will help us attach the top of the hat to the brim later on. And since we are on the subject, it is time to prepare the top part of our hat. We need to cut out the second pattern piece without forgetting to add one centimeter all around for the sewing allowance. We will cut this piece three times, once in the main fabric, my gorgeous velvet that I love with all my heart, and once in a fusible or any kind of interfacing to add firmness. I am in full recycling mode and I am trying my best to only work with what I have on hand at home, except of course if I have a specific order from a client. So this is the reason I will create my own homemade sew-on interfacing using several fabric scraps from my personal stash. So I used two layers of firm tulle inside two layers of cheap and stiff lining fabric that I would never use otherwise. To attach these layers together and vaguely imitate a sew-on interfacing, I pin everything together and make a zigzag stitch all around, as well as a few seams with straight stitches here and there. Voila, my facing is ready. I place it on the wrong side of one of my velvet triangles. I pin it, I remove the pointed tip that would be a bother to turn inside out later, and I make another zigzag stitch all around to fix the layers together. Now fold your triangle right sides together and stitch it at one centimeter from the edge. It is optional, but if you wish to give your hat a funny shape later, don't hesitate to add more wire in the little funnel created by our former seams. If you used fusible instead of a sew-on interfacing, you won't have this little tunnel, but I'll explain in a minute when and where it's possible to add it. Also, don't forget to protect your fabric from the sharp edge of the wire. Now is the time to press open your seam or to hand stitch it quickly if, like my beloved velvet, your fabric is allergic to the heat of your iron. If you have used an iron in fusible, this handmade seam will create a little tunnel in which you can now insert your wire and then turn your hat inside out. I mean, wow, look at this velvet. Before we have fun twisting the top and the brim of our hats, and this will come, I promise, thanks to the wire, we will need to stitch both parts of the hat together. So first we need to cut a bit more of the fabric inside the brim. You can cut at about 7 mm from the seam. And when it's done, we need to insert the top part of the hat into the brim's opening and pin both pieces right sides together. Take your time, you have time, be nice to your fabric, it might be slightly challenging to really have both pieces fit properly together. But it is completely doable. Then we are going to stitch it with a sewing machine. Again, take your time. You can even hand baste your seam before going to the machine, which is what I did. You won't have pins in the middle and the result will be amazing. Now your head needs space to fit in, so we are going to make notches in the fabric, making sure not to cut the seam, of course. This was not planned. At the last minute I decided to add some foam inside the hat, Therefore, if you do it as well, the lining piece will need to be reshaped in order to fit inside the top of the hat, which is now quite full. Instead of making a brand new lining pattern, I suggest we do the following. Fold your piece right sides together, 
stitch it at 1 cm. Then try the lining on, on your head, to check where you could cut it to have a small fitted little cap instead of a big pointy hat. We can now stitch this little cap at 1 cm from the edge and insert it inside the hat wrong sides together. So the way to do it is to fold the edge of the lining at about 1 cm and to pin it all around the opening of the hat. It is possible to sew this lining in place with a sewing machine, but truth is this would require a great deal of precision and care and it's not necessarily very practical. So for my own sake I will make a few invisible stitches by hand. Now the very last thing before twisting our hats, we can make a few stitches to contain the lining inside the hat as well as preventing the padding to fall down on our heads. Do not panic, these stitches will be covered by our decorations. For example, we could add a ribbon, a belt hook, tiny spiders, old laces and whatnot. So let's proceed, shall we? We are going to stitch all around the base of the hat, making sure to grab all the layers together, which will firmly hold the lining inside where it belongs. And voila, I added this pretty stripe that was dying of boredom in the bottom of my sewing table for years and years. I added this butterfly as well, which I have had for a long time. And now, finally, is the time to have fun! Let's give our hats the most crooked and quirky shape possible. Of course, it is the wire inside the hat that makes the twisting possible. Ta-da! <laughs> I am done! Congratulations to all of you and happy Halloween! Bye bye! A bientôt!